And so far, we have seen the different kind of operators which we can use in a link query and sequences. Now, let's have a look on the different aspects of link, like the different type of data sources from where we can retrieve the data. And here, we are going to start with link to objects. And so far, in the previous videos, we have used a list collection in which we have written the query. So basically that list object is nothing but the object which is implemented by iEnumerable interface, the generic version of iEnumerable interface so that we can make a query. Similarly, if we have some other kind of collection which is implemented with this particular interface, then we can also use that object for making a link to object query. So let's start a very basic implementation as we have seen so much in the link to object so far. So here we'll see a basic implementation where we'll see how to create a collection and how to make a query out of that. So let's start the practical implementation now. So now in the concept of link to object, we'll have to create any object which is implemented by iNumerable as here. You can see I am using list cl class from the system.collections.generic and if I will come to the structure of this list, I will notice like it this one is getting implemented by iEnumerable interface. So that means I can go easily for this particular thing, for this particular class list. And since it is a generic one, I have used this class employee with having some property, you can create uh, class with some more properties and methods but just for giving the structure to my entity I have created this class. Now when I'll start implementing that first of all using the object initializer I will instantiate my object that is EMP list and then inside this I'll have to put some employee type data. So again I have used the object initializer for the employee data so that I can get the uh, list in an easy manner. Now, right after this, I have re returned this em employee list in the page load where from where I have called this get employees method. And now, once we have the data in the uh, this list, I can start making the query from this object. When I say link to object, I mean the objects like this, which has some collections inside it so that we can query. You can also go for the simple array, but uh, retrieving the data from the objects like this will be more meaningful sometimes. So what I'll do, I'll just write a simple query. If you have already gone through the uh, previous videos, I have done that earlier as well. So just what we need to do, we'll uh, define a variable out here, where result, then I will start writing it from the from keyword from EMP in EMP list. So what it will do, it will just start copying the data from this list one by one to this employee variable and then later I will be able to select the employee. In this particular case, I have retrieved all the columns from the collection. Now what I will do, I have already taken a grid view on my web page that is this default.aspx, this is my grid view one. So just say gridview1.datasource is equal to result and then as we always do with the grid view, we'll have to do the data binding. Alright, if you want, you can just write a for each loop if you want to retrieve the data one by one. So let's execute this one now and here you can see all the records, all the eight records with the four columns are now here in the grid view. Now if you want to put some conditions like a normal SQL query, I can go for the where clause where I'll say where EMP dot salary is greater than or equal to 40,000. So this will give all the employees with having salary minimum 40,000 and th those will be in this result. So now when I will execute, I will not get any employee with salary less than 40,000 and now there are five records which we can see all are having salary more than 40,000. Similarly, if I don't want to retrieve all the columns, I can simply use new keyword for defining a new anonymous type right here. And here what I'll do, I'll just pass some 
column names or field names after this. So for example, I want to get employee.id, then employee.name, and then employee.salary. So this is how I can ju I, I just got rid of the department ID column and all the three columns have been retrieved. But when you will execute the query here, you will get the same headers as the name of the property. But if you want to change that at any instance, you can do that easily just by passing the alias right here. Like EMP ID, EMP name and salary. If, for example, I want to get annual salary rather than the monthly salary, I'll have to write a formula, which I can do as well right here. So as you can see, salary into 12 is the annual salary. So now when I'll execute, you can get the annual salary, calculated annual salary here in the table. So after that, you can apply as many as operators you want, which we have already covered in the tutorial. So this is how you can simply start working with the link to objects after creating the collection object like this.